Hey, with us now, we've got the former CIA director, John Brennan, with us. He's a senior national security and intel analyst for NBC News. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, yesterday, you had suggested, uh, Mr. Brennan, that, that loyal Republicans, that patriotic Republicans speak out. Uh, some actually did begin to speak out in my former party, not as many as I would have liked, but it seems that yesterday was a, a, a moment that triggered many to finally say the president had gone too far. What do you believe in the best interest, not only of America's intel agencies, but also in the best interest of America's national security, did those patriotic Republicans need to do today on the Hill? Well, I think there's a big question, first of all, in terms of those who are on Mr. Trump's national security team, whether they can continue to serve in good conscience an individual who basically betrayed his nation. But then the legislators on the Hill, especially the Republicans, need to ask themselves what they should do in order to try to protect and preserve this country's liberties and freedoms, uh, despite having Mr. Trump in the Oval Office. And so I think the outcry needs to be strong. It needs to endure. And they need to then also take action, whether it's a censure or whether or not they are going to decide that this is not the Republican Party that they once knew, that they need to step away from it, like you did. That this is not what Ronald Reagan said, uh, meant when he said to Mr. Gorbachev, uh, bring down that wall. And I heard the words that were just uh, said uh, in the film clip about simple-minded appeasement is folly. And that certainly is true. And so those Republicans on the Hill need to do more than just speak out and criticize. They need to act. They need to put pressure on Mr. Trump. And they need to send a clear signal that this is intolerable and they are going to um, act upon it. Mr. Director, uh, obviously Dan Coach yesterday moved quickly uh, and honorably to stand up for the men and the women who have given their entire adult lives to America's intel agency, also the men and women in uniform that helped uh, in uncovering um, the, the interference in America's democratic process in 2016. Would you recommend, do you believe it's actually necessary for other members of Donald Trump's foreign policy team and intel community, uh, like Mike Pompeo, uh, like the Secretary of Defense, General Mattis, to come out today uh, with similar statements uh, supporting and defending the men and women who sacrifice uh, everything often in, in defending this country. Well, good on Dan Coates to stand up for the women and men of the intelligence community. Um, and those who are going to be silent in this administration are complicit. Uh, and so they need to be able to speak out very strongly. But what Mr. Trump did yesterday was to betray the women and men of the FBI, the CIA, NSA, and others, and to betray the American public. And that's why I use the term that this is nothing short of treasonous, because it is a betrayal of the nation. He is giving aid and comfort to the enemy, and it needs to stop. And Mr. Trump needs to understand that there are going to be consequences for him, too. And I do hope that those who voted for Mr. Trump, in good conscience, are going to see that he is leading us down a very dangerous path. And it is a dangerous path. And what we don't want is for Mr. Putin to walk away from that meeting, thinking that he can get away now with whatever he wants. And I still shake my head trying to understand what was discussed during the two-hour one-on-one. And what was discussed uh, between the, uh, the two t uh, sides uh, in their bilateral meeting? We only saw what Mr. Trump said during the press conference. I can't even imagine what he said behind closed doors. I can't imagine what he said to Mr. Putin directly. I am very concerned about what type of impact it might have on our intelligence community and on this country. You know, Mike Barnacle, yesterday uh, many Republicans attacked Donald Trump. Uh, said that uh, his statements and his actions in Helsinki kowtowing to Putin uh, were disgusting. Uh, I, I think all of those adjectives could, uh, all the adjectives that were used could also be applied to Mike Pence, who shamefully, hmm. shamefully defended the President of the United States last night in the strongest terms. Uh, shamefully defended his performance, shamefully defended uh, his kowtowing 
to a former KGB agent shamefully defended uh, Donald Trump's whitewashing of the Russians' interference in the 2016 election. Yeah, you're correct, Joe. You're correct. Another shameful moment uh, from the vice president this time. Uh, but Director Brennan, intelligence gathering, as you certainly know, is an art. Uh, and the art is sometimes incredibly dangerous and in sometimes lethal to the gatherer. So yesterday we had a meeting that we know very little about, to our closed door meeting between the president, Putin, a KGB agent, KGB director, and the president of the United States. What could happen in your mind, the most dangerous thing that could happen in your mind in that meeting when you have President Putin, a skilled interrogator, questioning, talking with, conversationally with the President of the United States who is so limited in his knowledge of the world and his knowledge of what intelligence truly means. Well, Mike, as you point out, Mr. Putin is a skilled and trained KGB officer, a master manipulator who has decades of experience. Mr. Trump is way, way out of his depth when he goes into a one-on-one -on -one with Mr. Putin. And as you point out, U.S. intelligence capabilities are exceptionally precious, but also exceptionally delicate. And I don't know what Mr. Trump might have said in that meeting that could have, in fact, compromised or impacted those capabilities. I just don't know. And I still do not understand why he didn't trust a John Bolton, a Mike Pompeo, and a John Kelly to be in that meeting and to hear what he said and to hear what Mr. Putin said. That raises the cockles on my back. It just, it gets me very uh, upset and angry. And then when I saw the performance in the press conference where he could have done what is, was minimally acceptable, which is to say that Russia interfered in the election, we need to address that and we need to move on even, but we're going to hold Russia to account. He didn't do that. He sided with Mr. Putin and he threw the intelligence community, the FBI, the Department of Justice and others fully under the bus. Is it likely, Mr. Director, that the Russians recorded that two-hour conversation? Oh, I would find it um, um, unbelievable if they didn't. Uh, in some manner, yes. And did Americans record it as well, do you suspect? I have no idea. Uh, but, I but either way, it's likely somewhere there exists a recording <laughs> of what happened in that room. I think whatever Mr. Trump said in that meeting with Mr. Putin is now memorialized on Russian tape and it will be used as necessary by Mr. Putin against Mr. Trump. And, and presumably Mr. Trump would have known going into the meeting that there was a chance the Russians were recording it. I'm sure he was told that. Mm. Whether he would have known that is something else. Whether he accepts what he is told by the women and men of the CIA and the intelligence community, I don't know. So that could be used as compromising information. I understand as former CIA director, there's classified information you're not going to share with us on national television. But the question now has to be asked based on what we saw yesterday, and Madeleine Albright even raised it a few minutes ago. Does Vladimir Putin, does the Russian government have something personally on Donald Trump? Well, Donald Trump knows what he has done, and he, has no, he knows what might the Russians be aware of. And so I think his actions toward Mr. Putin may reflect that concern in terms of what is in Donald Trump's past that the Russians have and might use against him. Is there anything you can characterize for us that perhaps Russia might have on Donald Trump? <clears throat> I'm not going to go into that at all. But it does exist. No, I'm not saying it exists at all. I'm just saying that Trump knows. He, and I think that's why he's been so desperate to stop the Mueller investigation. Because uh, clearly he is concerned and very, I think, fearful about what might be exposed during that investigation. Given the behavior and the danger that accrues to people who are in the intelligence gathering business, and given their obligation to report this intelligence to the leaders of this country, but given the attitude of the President of the United States towards the intelligence community, and the behavior and the intellect of the President of the United States, would there be a tendency? for intelligence gatherers, briefers, to withhold now some vital intelligence to the president? There very well might be. There, there might be out of concern. And there are things that, as director of CIA, I wouldn't uh, share details with the president of the United States or uh, individuals outside of CIA because you're trying to protect the capabilities. And you don't want to give anybody any information that they don't need. 
And so I don't know whether or not Mr. Trump has been questioning his intelligence briefers about the capabilities and how he's going to handle and protect that information. I don't know. But I think these are questions that the intelligence community is asking itself. What is Mr. Trump up to when he meets? We, as an intelligence officer, we were not allowed to meet privately with any Russian. Mm much less a Russian official. I mean, this is something that we don't do unless there's some type of, you know, formal approval. But a meeting one-on-one -on -one with an, a Russian intelligence officer, uh, <clears throat> that is something that uh, CIA officers are well-trained to be able to be aware of what they might try to, uh, to do to exploit that uh, relationship. John, what do you see now as Russian foreign policy goals? What do you think Putin's definition of success is? <clears throat> and how close, after this week, how close do you think he is to, to realizing success? Well, I, I think he is very um, confident and comfortable now that Mr. Trump is not going to hold Mr. Putin and the Russians to account for the interference of the election. And although I think they are rejoicing at how well the Helsinki summit and meetings went, uh, Mr. Putin might be concerned that, <laughs> that Trump went beyond uh, where he should have gone. And now it's making it very difficult for Trump to continue in this, you know, with this relationship because of the outcry from both sides of the aisle. So I think even Mr. Mr. Putin is thinking that Trump has uh, gone well beyond uh, what was uh, seen as uh, acceptable. Do you think in any way he was made nervous by the Mueller indictments, the degree of specificity about the GRU? Do that we know more about what they are up to than perhaps he had surmised? It's, that's a good question. And I think the Department of Justice and the intelligence community did an excellent job, not only in terms of tracing the forensics, but also doing it in a manner that's not going to compromise, reveal collection capabilities. And so I think it sends a strong signal to Russia and to Putin is that w you think you're good at cyber? <laughs> We're better than, at cyber than you are. And I wish that Trump would say, you try to rattle our cages again, and we're going to rattle your cages you know, beyond what you even uh, thought that we could do. We need to make it clear to Mr. Putin, he cannot do this and get away with it. Mm -hmm. And that's why Dan Coats mm -hmm. and Gina Haspel and others really need to be on the top of their game now and speak truth to power and make sure that Trump doesn't get away with this. All right, Director Brennan, thank you so much for being with us. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, and thank you for your insights. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.